situation where we find ourselves in. And um, the students that I speak to um, in various platforms, even the students that I teach, um, uh, some of the students that I come across, they always tell me that they have a problem with time management and procrastination. And this is true because we also see it with the sometimes the quality of work that is being submitted by students. And also when I speak to um, some of my colleagues, I call my colleagues uh, people who are doing postgraduate studies, there is a problem with procrastination and also time management. Perhaps maybe um, in this presentation would uncover some of the things, how we can overcome those uh, challenges. And also what is important there is how people can set um, goals um, to get uh, better grades, because we all want better grades, be it at undergraduate level or even at postgraduate le grad graduate level, you, you want to have a thesis that is, um, that is highest marks, right? So before we start, um, I just want to make a disclaimer that as much as I work for CPUT or um, I'm associated with CPUT, the thoughts or ideas that are presented here are my own ideas or my own thoughts and they by no means represent the thoughts of CPUT. So I don't want to get into trouble. So that's a disclaimer I want to um, set aside. And of course, this presentation is for all students from all universities um, across the country. Right, so the first thing that we need to understand before we even go further and discuss remote learning, we need to understand why are we studying? Why are you studying? Why are you registered for the course that you are registered for? Why are you studying radiography? Why are you enrolled for mechanical engineering? Why are you doing chemistry? So the why is a very important question. I always say this to students that even before you can um, do anything, you need to understand your why. Your why is important because it will serve as a motivation for you to persist in your studies. So we know that motivation can either be intrinsic or motivation can also be extrinsic. So it's very important that even before you consider embarking in the journey of studying, you know your why. Why are you studying? Why is it important to know your why? It's very essential to know your why because there will be times when things get difficult, especially with studying. There will be times when it feels like, no, I need to give up. Or I have to give up now because I don't see a way forward. There are also those times where things get frustrating. Um, um, the calculations don't work out. There may be times whereby it does not make sense to continue studying. And especially during this period of time where as students, you may feel that you are isolated, you are alone, you are studying from home. So your why is that thing that is going to make you to get up and work. Your why is that thing that is going to make you to, to, to stand up after you have fallen. I think there is an echo here. So. Okay, so your why, sorry about that. So your why is that thing that is going to make you to stand up and 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 ensure that you take up the task that is at hand. So it's very important that as a student you understand why are you studying and why you are doing what you are doing. Right. So let us look at the landscape. So the landscape that we find ourselves in today, we find ourselves in the midst of the pandemic, which is COVID-19. And COVID-19 has come and it found us really, really, um, you know, sitting there. Somebody was saying, I can't believe that um, we waited for 12 o'clock on the 31st for 2020 to have this kind of a year. Nobody could have seen that we're going to have a pandemic. And this period of um, COVID-19 has resulted in us having to shift the, 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 what we call the, the normal way of living. 
So now there's a new paradigm shift that we need to embrace, which is presented by this um, COVID-19 um, 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 pandemic. And with this COVID-19 pandemic, other people are experiencing stress, fear, anxiety, um, um, because students don't know whether are they going to finish the syllabus. People don't know whether um, are they going to start maybe from um, first year again next year. People are not sure whether um, 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 the, the, the pandemic will result in them getting the qualifications that they signed up for. So there's a lot of stress and um, anxiety that um, students are facing during this time. And it came at a, a point whereby some of us were already at rest and now we have to move back home. And at home, there are challenges that we face there. First of all, at home, they can just uh, decide to send you to go and buy eggs, you know, while you are studying. They say, no, you must go and, um, um, and, uh, and cook. There's chores that you must do at home. And this requires you to adapt now to another setting because at res maybe you had the whole time to study. Now you have to adjust and adapt. So now you have to adapt academically. So you need an academic adjustment in terms of how you were studying. Because now um, during this period in this landscape, you were used to seeing lecturers on face-to-face -face basis. Or maybe if you're a postgraduate student, you, you would have a communication with your supervisor on a face-to-face -face basis. Now you have to adjust and go to an online setting. But socially, we have to adjust because during this time, I'm also cautious of the fact that some of the students, you, you may be um, at home, but you have to take care of somebody that is also sick or due to COVID or is recovering from COVID-19. So all those things require some social adjustment um, from, from your part as a student. And on top of that, you also have to adjust personally or emotionally in terms of your goals. Some of you had goals that now you have to kind of adjust um, um, because of this um, COVID-19. So we find ourselves in a landscape which is not familiar. We are not familiar with this landscape that we find ourselves in. On top of that, then the universities are saying, um, we want to save the academic year and no students should be left behind. And we now find ourselves in a space where we have to learn, uh, the other people call it remote multimodal learning, other people call it remote learning. So remote learning in this context is basically you as a student being separated or studying away um, 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 from the normal setting where you'd have face-to-face -face contact with your lecturers, professors, or with even your peers. Now you are alone at home. So you have to study there. And um, you are getting material via learning management systems such as Blackboard, or you're getting uh, material uh, uh, via Vula if you are at UCT. And basically you are studying using videos. There's no lecturer that is um, in front of you. Right, so this is the uh, landscape that we find ourselves in. So when I talk to students, um, I, I discovered that there, there is some myths about um, um, remote learning. So myths are some things that cannot be true. Sometimes they are not true, but people believe that it's true. So for you to succeed in remote learning as a student, let us first understand what are the myths that um, exist um, regarding remote learning. So some people believe that remote learning is easy and very quick. It's quick and easy. I'm sorry to say this, but I don't believe this to be true, right? Because um, remote learning, I think, can be very difficult because you have to adjust to a setting whereby nobody is explaining things to you at the rate that you would normally have people explaining things. Let's say nobody's explaining things in class. Um, um, sometimes students would ask a lecturer a question, even if you did not ask the question, but if somebody asked that question, then you 
kind of um, also get the answer. But now you have to study on your own. And then sometimes students then think that because it's remote learning, there is no need for students to be active. They can just study passively, sit there for hours and then looking at the notes. So this is not true. So you still need to actively engage um, with the material. Um, I've seen some students who are doing this very brilliantly. Um, they are setting up WhatsApp groups to discuss specifically issues regarding the content that they have to study. And some people have discussion groups or discussion boards on uh, Blackboard, which is also working very, very well. So some people also believe that there is no need to take in um, notes during remote learning. This is not true. I believe that note taking is one of the skills that you need to have as a student to be able to take notes in your own um, setting and you can do this via computer you can do it manually so you still need to take notes because once you engage with the information when you are taking notes you are engaging and the information is passing through your brain we are able to consume and process that information that you are writing so note taking is still very important and we see it now because um, students have videos that they can look at on YouTube, um, uh, videos of lecture material, but they still don't engage. So don't assume that by just watching the video, um, you've done everything so you'd understand everything. You still need to be able to take your notes. So this is a myth that note taking is not required in, in remote learning, which is very much required. So the other thing that students do is that they during this time, a lot of people believe that they are on your own. You know, you are there in Kanduli, or you are there in Kronskop, and then you think that uh, this is the end of the world. I'm alone here. Nobody is here for me. I think this is not true. There is a lot of students who are forming um, groups to support each other. So this is very important that you form a community of practice. I will share a little bit on the coming slides and how you can um, effectively do that. And uh, the fifth challenge that is there in terms of these myths is that now all of a sudden, because of COVID-19, um, you are at home people think that uh, I can just study anytime. I don't need to have a schedule. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I don't need to have a schedule. A schedule is very much important. You still need to have some form of um, routine in your studies, right? So you need to have a schedule. You need to have what, what I call a game plan. You can't go into a game without having a game plan. So your schedule is the game plan, is your strategy that you're going to use in order to be able to succeed during this time. So the other thing is people are now multitasking. So one person is on um, Facebook on one hand, and then on the other hand, you are trying to solve the problem for glycolysis. Uh, uh, if you are doing chemical engineering, you are trying to balance the, the equations for the reactors. But on the other hand, you are on Twitter, and then you are moving from Twitter to Facebook, to Instagram, to Telegram, and all these grams, you are there. But at the same time, you are trying to start. So people think that now multitask. And I think this is a big no-no. Don't try, don't attempt to multitask. We'll give you some tips on how you can avoid this. I'm not sure if um, do any of these myths apply to you and what do you think about um, um, what do you think about remote learning? So if you are still with me in this presentation, can you please give me a heads up via the chat area, maybe just like a note or something, an emoji to say that you are still with us here. Right, I see some people they are giving me a thumbs up. Mdu is also here. Um, okay, Candice is also here. Very good. It means I'm not uh, talking alone. Hey, you see, also, let me also put it this way you know, as much as remote learning is challenging for students, it's also a challenge for lecturers because some of us we are not used to technology so now we have to come out and, uh, and, and, and teach online i also feel a little bit weight because i don't see faces like i'm looking at the screen here okay but it's good to hear that you you are with us so now that we understand what are these myths regarding online learning so i want us to go a little deep big 
um, deeper now because this period, this COVID-19 or studying in general presents us with an opportunity not only to discover or to master the content, but what I think is mostly important is to discover yourself as a person and also as a student. So I'm going to give you some tips in the following slides. So here, um, there's what we call learning styles. So this is your time for you to discover your learning style if you have not yet um, know what is your learning style. So these are categorized into four um, categories. There's the visual, there's the auditory, reading and writing, and then kinesthetic. Um, and of course, there could be more, but I, I chose these four. So if you are a visual student, so you learn best by seeing graphs, charts, um, lesson outlines, picture aids, or PowerPoints. So these are students who wants to see the stuff, who wants to learn best by seeing um, visual representation. Then you also have another group at the bottom, which is the auditory students. So these ones, they, they prefer audio, they prefer to hear. So they learn best by hearing. So um, they, these type of students, you find normally when they are reading uh, notes, then they read the notes aloud to themselves. They want to hear the sound. And um, I had a friend um, who was not studying during my time. So he would not really study, but he would come to me and say, Vus, let's discuss. And then we would argue and argue about concepts, but he would go and write because he prefers, once he can hear it, um, he can be able to replicate it. These are people who prefer mostly discussions. So by involving themselves in discussions, they are engaging with the content. So now with the remote learning, if you are alone at home and you are a person that prefers discussions, it can also be frustrating time for you because you have nobody to talk to. So it's very important that you then collaborate with other students um, and discuss, uh, have discussions via WhatsApp, have discussions uh, via Telegram and these other grams that you guys have. So as we are used to the grams of weighing in the lab. Yeah, but those other grams, you get it. So then there's also these students in the corner there who learn best by reading and writing. So you, this person wants to read and then they can write a long story for you, paragraphs, pages and chapters. So these students learn best by writing. And then the last one are students who learn best by doing. So they want to be involved with the material. So they want to have some touch or feel of the material. So what I also want to highlight here is that um, some people, you may see that um, you have more than one type of learning style. So you can be either a reading and writing, but you also have some elements of visual or auditory, or you can also be auditory and also visual at the same time. So what I want to say to you here is that as students, you need to be able to identify your own learning style and then use that to your strength in your studies, especially in this um, um, period of uh, remote learning. People who are auditory, there's videos that are available um, on YouTube, so you can watch YouTube videos. But there's also a trick that I've recently um, um, learned using um, PDF, so you can put in your notes on PDF and then you can play, ask the PDF or the computer to read the notes for you. Wow, technology, I didn't know that. So there's um, various tools and techniques that you can use, but I don't want to delve deep into the tools for this um, webinar, uh, but just to show that they, there's uh, a lot of things that you can do. So then the question is, um, now that I know or I've discovered my learning style, um, how do I get started with the remote learning? And I think this is the most important question that a lot of you have. Um, be it undergraduates or even postgraduates. So the first step that I would like you to have is to have a plan. Have a plan. A plan is like a strategy. So you can establish a routine. I'm going to wake up every day at um, six o'clock from six to seven, I'm exercising. And from there, I'm going to have coffee. And after coffee at eight o'clock, I start sitting down and I'm studying. 
and in your plan include um, checking um, your learning management systems, uh, check your emails regularly, check Vula, uh, if you're at UCT, check Blackboard, if you're at CPUT, um, <clears throat> so that you don't remain behind. So there we're just doing a quick scan of the things that we need to do. So you have a routine. And then the second thing is that I would say is that get organized. Some students face a problem that uh, as much as you can set a time to study, by the time you sit down, now you have to study, you remember, ish, I didn't close, um, 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 I didn't close the gate, or maybe I didn't switch on the geyser. Now you have to stand up again. So that um, disturbs you. Some students will find out by the time you sit down, you wanted to study marketing. Um, so you spent 20 minutes reviewing the textbook, but then when you want to take the notes, you, re you realize that your book is left in the other room. So by the time you study, you must have all your material in the same place. Be organized, know what is it that you're going to study, and um, perhaps use a table and a chair, sit down and, and, and be really nice. And you can also use a calendar to guide you. What I advise students not to do, especially in this time of um, 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 remote learning, is that don't attempt to study um, sitting on top of your bed and uh, also maybe wearing uh, pyjamas. I know I don't have to say this, but people, you know, sometimes you work, you wake up and then you just take a shower and then you dress very nicely. Then you become confident, you know, and then you just tell yourself, I'm going to study. Actually, you should treat your studies as a full-time work, as if you are going to work um, full-time. So get organized. Then the third part is I want to say is set boundaries. I mean, if you are at university, I, I assume that um, people living in your community respect you. So set boundaries with family, friends, um, or even your pets, those people who have pets, also set boundaries that by this time, uh, my pet should not come into my room or to my study area, I'll be studying. It's very important that um, during this time, we also speak or talk to our families um, and let them know that our studies come first. It may sound very selfish. Uh, people may say you, you are antisocial, say all sorts of things, but it's true, your studies should come first during this time. And what I find is that uh, it, it many a times, there are more people who are willing to help us than people who do not want to help us. You may find that your family also is willing to work with you, is willing to assist you and uh, to support you. So set boundaries to say, during this time, I'm going to be studying. Then study and don't go on Facebook. Um, the other thing that you may have is, um, which I think is very important, um, any other thing is to have a study buddy. So if you are in class, um, collaborate with the PM. Um, I teach first years, so if my students are here, um, I'm going to gossip about you. Um, so you find that there is a problem with students um, who forget about deadlines. They just saw it on the WhatsApp group when somebody says, I've just submitted. Really? There was a submission? I didn't know. You know? So what I want to say is get a study buddy that you can collaborate or work with um, um, to say, okay, right, these are the due dates that we need to work with on uh, towards, or these are the things that we need to, to do. And this will also, it's a person that will also help you to become motivated and you remind each other in terms of the deadlines. Remember I said in the beginning, we are not alone. So don't try to, you know, study alone. Also try to collaborate with other people and there's a lot of benefits that you would have by having a study buddy. I'm not saying uh, it's a person that you should, uh, you know, be um, uh, be in a, your handbag. You know, they say there's a person is a handbag. No, I'm just saying a person that you will work with and you will treat each other as, as equals and uh, as partners in, in crime, not in crime, as partners in remote learning. Um, and then the other thing that is important is for you to use your university resources. Um, I know in some cases there are tutors 
um, that are allocated to subjects. If you, you are studying and you don't understand certain concepts, speak to your tutors, ask questions. Those people get paid by the university, by the way, to assist you. So you must use them. Use that those people that are allocated to assist you. And at most, in most cases, you would find that they are also willing to share the knowledge that they have with you. Also talk to your lecturers, um, collaborate with them because uh, they, they are there also to assist you. And one thing that I also want to say is that uh, if you feel that at any given point that you are not coping, maybe also use the student counseling unit, even if you are at home. Uh, I know there's a hotline at CPUT that um, they are using for, to assist people. So student counseling will also come in very handy um, at this time. And also maybe where possible, you can use the library to, um, to get in the resources that you, you can have, right. So these are some of the tips that you can use in order for you to get started with uh, remote learning. I know some of you have already started, but if there are things that um, um, are highlighted here, you can just take that uh, into um, consideration. Right, so now I want to talk about your move. Your move is very important. So your move is what I call the SMART goals. So how do you proceed um, from understanding um, um, the requirements of remote learning? So there is a, a mechanism that is used throughout, which is called uh, the SMART goals or setting SMART goals. I've been using this technique for, you know, I don't know for how long, but uh, ever since I was a student, which is called uh, SMART, it's an abbreviation for um, having goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, result focused, and also time-based. So an example of a, a goal that is uh, specific is to say as a student, I'm going to read two chapters of my textbook. I'm going to read uh, thermodynamics and I'm also going to read uh, material balances and I will make notes on them by the end of the week. So we know the goal is specific. We are reading thermodynamics, we are reading material balances and it's the end of the week. Right, so that's attainable. So you don't want to read the whole textbook. Or you can say, I will complete um, um, food chemistry tutorials for the meat section. So goal by the end of the week. So it's a goal that is um, um, specific. So, and we can be able to measure it because you can see how many questions you have done for, um, for, the, for the tutorials on meat, right? So it should also be measurable. By measurable, we mean you should be able to monitor and evaluate so that you, are, you know whether you are achieving your goal or not. So if the tutorial for meat for food chemistry is not done, it means you are not reaching your goal, right? And maybe you need to alter your goals. Sometimes you need to alter your goals. So when you're setting goals, goal setting, I like it because it's not a cast in stone. If you see something that is not working, change it. You are not a tree. So you can be able to change things as you go. And you are in control of your studies. You are in control of your, of your life. So your goals should be smart, specific, measured, and attainable or achievable. So try to be realistic when you are setting goals. So for example, um, you can decide to read three articles in two hours. That is unrealistic if it takes you two hours to read one article, right? So if you want to um, read three chapters in two hours, but it, in actual fact, it takes you two hours to read one chapter. So that goal may be unrealistic, right? Or it may be unachievable. So what you should do is to say, okay, right, I'm going to read three chapters over a period of three days. So one chapter, it takes me two days to read one, two hours to read one chapter. So on day one, I'm going to read chapter one for two hours, and then day two, and then day three. Your goals should be re results focused. So have a clear picture in your mind, clear distinct outcomes for meeting your goals and hold yourself accountable. So here, this is the nice part is that you hold yourself accountable. Nobody is holding uh, yourself accountable. So you are accountable to yourself. 
right? So your goals should be time bound. So set a deadline, right? So I'm gonna talk about um, people who are chasing deadlines. So the students are saying to me, say, hey, I'm chasing deadlines, hey? So we're gonna talk about that in a few slides. So your goals should have deadlines. Set a deadline for each goal that you have. However, if you have more complex tasks, so you can be able to break the goal into multiple stages or multiple steps. Um, what we see is that uh, people are trying to um, um, finish things very quick on the last minute. It does not work. It's very important to be able to give yourself enough um, time, right? So then the other thing is that your goals should be time-based, so there should be um, a time a timeline um, in terms of these goals that you have. So I've came up with what we I, I termed a, a cycle of self-directed learning. So this is my innovation people. So in this thing, as a student who's engaged in their remote learning, you need to go undergo through a series of steps. The first step is assess, evaluate, plan, apply, and then reflect. My students, they, they would know uh, I have a, a situation whereby they need to complete what I call learning channels, where I just give them free marks by merely by reflecting on the learning process. And I'll show you why this is very important. So if we look at step one, step one may be a situation whereby you have to assess the task, the task that you, you have to do, right? So what is it that I'm, I'm supposed to do? Um, I'm supposed to do an assignment. So in this assignment, I need to evaluate whether this is that I need. So step two is what skills do you need? So for this assignment, for me to be able to do it successfully, I need to understand glycolysis, I need to understand chemotherapy, or I need to understand the crystallography if you are in chemistry. Or if we are talking about uh, chemistry, you need to understand the structure of electrons or something like that. So those are the knowledge and skills that you need to do. So you need firstly assess and then you evaluate what knowledge and skills that you need. And then the, the third part is now you can plan. So by planning, you plan when are you going to start studying? When are you, plan, when are you going to start doing a certain task? And then once you've done the planning, and then you apply the strategies there or the plan that you you've already devised in number three and then you can then evaluate your performance afterwards so by evaluating performance so you can evaluate based on uh, um, the marks that you get or the feedback that you get from your lecturers and the last part you must always reflect and then adjust if needed so reflect on your learning process as a whole so as a student you should undergo through this uh, cycle of self-directed learning it's very important especially now since that you will be um, evolved involved in uh, remote learning right um how am i doing with time um please let me know am i too fast am i too slow for you just give me a heads up in the comments section are you still with me is this thing interesting? Are you learning? Um, is this thing boring? Uh, is it just a waste of your time? Just let me know in the comments section um, so that I can um, see. Right. Okay, Bonga says it's perfect. Uh, anybody else? Are you still with us? Okay, uh, the pace is good. Um, doing great Nikita is also here okay so thank you very much so now I want to go to the the crux of the matter so we are going to the crux of the matter the most important thing that I get is um, time management people are saying I'm struggling with time management oh if I can manage your time if I can manage my time so before we can even begin to talk about time management i think it's very important that we understand all of us the simple logic that there is 24 hours in a day nelson mandela when he was in prison he didn't have 27 hours all of us have 24 hours in a day so if you multiply say by seven we get 168 hours per week and when I was a student doing first year, my mentor used to say to me, 
you know what Vusi? if you can study for 40 hours including your classes the time that you spend in class 40 hours you will be a good student you will pass but i can definitely tell you if you can study for 60 hours you will get a cum laude i said what he said you will get a cum laude if you can study for 60 hours then i said ah, let's put that into practice um for i think for three to four years i was studying 60 hours per week dedicating 60 hours per week and uh, those who know me they know that uh, i have a couple of cum laudes that i got oh by the way your cum laude for those who do not know is that thing that uh, you get uh, when you have an average of 75 percent and above for for your subjects and then uh, during graduations they say uh, and the whole uh, the whole uh, hall stands up and then they clap hands for you just for that uh, 30 seconds so it's a nice thing to have by the way so i digress now so let me come back to the point so a cum laude um, um you must study 60 hours um, at most in order for you to be able to be a successful um, student. So this is very important that in these 168 hours that you have, if you can dedicate 60 hours um, to your studies, you are definitely guaranteed that you will succeed, right? So this is a winning formula that we have. So how do you manage time? So for you to be able to manage time, you need to understand some simple basics. They call the Essenhofer matrix. So this matrix is where you can then be able to prioritize the tasks that you have, right? So the end is in now. Is, 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 so I'm about to finish now. Um, so the, the, the Essenhofer matrix looks at on the y-axis, I have what we call um, the importance, the level of importance, uh, tasks that are not important and tasks that are also important. Then on the x-axis, I have what we call the agent and not agent tasks. So then we then find what we call quadrant one, two, three, and four. So what goes into quadrant one? So quadrant one are activities that are important um, and, and, and agent. So these are tasks that, for example, you need to submit the assignment by Wednesday. You need to complete the online test. You need to do the, um, the learning journal by Friday. So these are tasks that you need to do. They are very important, right? And important and agent. Quadrant two are tasks that are important, but they are not agent. So things like um, going to exercise for 30 minutes is very important, but may not be agent. Um, setting your goals, it's very important, but it's not agent. Um, um, having a weekly plan, planning your weekly activities is very important, but it's not agent. So those are the things or activities that will go into quadrant two. Under quadrant three now, not important, but maybe agent, right? So uh, agent, but not important. So those are things whereby I need to send my friend who's in Kenya an email, right? To tell him that um, I'm doing good or I'm still alive. So, or maybe I need to attend um, a community meeting or I need to go to church. That may be agent, but it's not really important for your goals for you to, um, um, to succeed there or to pass uh, during this remote learning. And then we have things that are in quadrant four, not important and not agent. So these include activities like um, watching um, Netflix. Um, you heard that now there is a, a new episode of Money Heist. So um, you watch the whole day. So not important and not agent. Um, or maybe calling your girlfriend for two hours. By the way, um, people, you should not be calling girlfriends. We are on lockdown here, you should be studying. So maybe spending some two hours um, calling people and then we are sitting there on WhatsApp and um, or maybe also we are watching YouTube videos or you spend more time 
on Facebook liking um, Mini Lamini's pictures there or commenting there. So those are the things that are not important and then they are not agent. So you as a student, most of the activities that are important, they exist only in quadrant one and quadrant two, right? But you, you need to become a student that spends more time in quadrant two. What are you doing in quadrant two? Quadrant two is you planning your goals, planning your weekly schedule, or you exercising, or you spending some time organizing your room, um, your study area. So those are the things that are important. So what is happening in quadrant three and quadrant four? Those are things that are consuming your time. Those are the things that are causing you to always be chasing deadlines. Those are the things that are causing you to be always chasing um, 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 submissions because now you have to do things in an agent and an important manner. So every time now you have to be this person that is um, can't touch, can't get, can't hold a gala. You are always in a hurry because you spend more time when it comes to your work on quadrant three and quadrant four. Quadrant three and quadrant four are the causes and quadrant four is the effect so you need to spend your time doing the things that are important on quadrant two your plan for the week um when am i going to watch miss vangani's videos on youtube plan that right so when you get to youtube you don't watch uh, miley cyrus or beyonce stuff so you spend more time doing the things that are important and if you do that if you do that I'm definitely sure you will be able to succeed. So how should your study area look like? I understand and I'm also cognizant of the fact that study areas, they are different. But make sure that the study area that you use, even if you are a post-grade student, that it's a, a place that you are able to navigate. It's a place that is uh, clean. It's a place that will give you uh, peace of mind and will enable you to focus. So this is just one of the pictures um, that you can see and also maybe drink water have some water have the things that you need um, at close by and at close range for you as a student so time management is very important and um, I've designed what uh, this uh, kind of a brief um, schedule just to show you what are the things that you can put in the um, on, on, on your slides, on your, on your to-do list. And this to-do list, ladies and gentlemen, you can do them anyhow. As I've said um, in the beginning, um, what I say here is not really um, the end of it be all. It's not like you, you can change, you can alter stuff. Eh? Um, so this is just basically a thing that I did on Excel. You can put in your activities that you know definitely this must happen. Breakfast must happen lunch and um, chores uh, those people who are complaining about chores at home they must happen and but they must be budgeted and be planned in, in in your schedule and the dinner you're also gonna need dinner and some people maybe um these days we are fortunate that uh, the president is always on tv so we can also schedule some time for the president and then you also still need to to sleep so if i were to be a student who's studying so i just put in quotes uh, they, they don't really matter so maybe at eight o'clock on a monday so we are reading fot and then at nine o'clock we are taking notes and then you do some of the quizzes and then from 10 you do a study review of the notes and then you review what are these difficult concepts that i have um, i'm struggling to understand what chemotherapy is or i'm struggling to understand um, the laws of marketing i don't understand what do they mean about price product uh, position place all those things so you can then um, review the what are the things that you find difficult and then by 11 you, you are then studying and then from 12 o'clock you can have lunch and then you can also go and do your chores, the house chores that you have to do um, at home, wash dishes, clean, and do other stuff. But this, the important thing here is that you must budget the time. And it's very easy these days because most of us have smartphones. So you can use your smartphone um, um, calendar to set up activities that you want to, to do or want to have 
and you can use your smartphone to set up reminders that you can um, can have so an alarm rings um, after a given period of time so the point is that you should have a study plan that is going to work for you and i must also say here is that sometimes when we we are frustrated we take out whatever that's available um, um, um online so what i want to say is that use what is going to work for you um, I understand that um, some of us, we don't have the privilege to work during the day because maybe your neighbor is playing uh, the latest Zahara song, so they are making a lot of noise and then you can't study uh, or you find that during the day in the area where you study, it's not possible, where you stay, it's not possible to study. Perhaps you can think about um, changing your schedule from studying um, at night. I remember when I was uh, at home um, back in the day, I would wait for everybody to go and sleep. And then I would go into the kitchen and then those days um, I was studying in the kitchen because I didn't also have a table. So I had to use the table in the kitchen. So I would study when everybody is asleep, right? So then that's my quiet time to study. So you can also use what is possible for you. If it's not possible for you to study um, during the day, change your timetable and wake up at um, uh, 2 a.m. Like now, I currently wake up around 2 a.m. From 2 a.m. in the morning up until 6 a.m., I'm busy studying, I'm busy doing work. And then from 8, I, and then I go and sleep. So um, in terms of your timetabling or your schedule, use what is working out for you. But what is more important is that all activities must be planned and they must be in your schedule and here i want to warn you as students again that it's not going to work the first time it's not going to work the second time so it takes time to build good habits but don't give up so you have to try again uh, by trial and error and see what works uh, what works out for you so then the question is now that i know how to plan Hey, but I'm planning, I do put these things there on the list. I have a priority list, but I'm still procrastinating. Procrastinating is one of the challenges that students um, 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 find. So I used to have a motto which says, procrastination is the thief of time. Procrastination is the thief of time. It steals your time right so before you can be able to deal or to um to solve the problem of procrastination you need to have an awareness first why do you procrastinate why do you procrastinate um do or colleagues or just making an example so ask yourself this question why do i procrastinate so there are various reasons why people procrastinate people procrastinate because they have fear or anxiety or stress um, food chemistry very stressing microbiology very stressing uh, it's even worse when you get there to food technology one ah, i don't want even to talk about thermodynamics oh chem eng ah especially if you're at uct you oh, chem eng you know so those things can have can be contributing factors because now you are stressed or you have anxiety immediately once you think about um, um, studying uh, thermodynamics already your mind switches off you know then you can then um, procrastinate so those are the things that uh, causes people to procrastinate sometimes people they don't know what to do you don't know what to study or you also don't know how to study Sometimes people, they, um, they procrastinate because they find some other subjects boring. It's true, I, guys, just, just think about it. Some of the subjects now that I know, they are boring. But you still need to, to study. And one of the major things, again, of procrastination, guys, or which is contributing, that I think you as students also should be aware of, especially students that um smart students all of you are smart students but there's this people we have is perfectionism you want to perfect everything you want to perfect every assignment and you don't want to go and do another task until you feel that you've done 
everything perfectly. So perfectionism can also lead to procrastination because you don't want to go and do something else that you are supposed to be doing and then you are doing something that you are not um, supposed to be doing. So that can really be um, a problem. And also if something has no meaning, it's easy to procrastinate. Uh, that's why I said when we started, you need to have your why. Your why will serve you as an ingredient that ferments your motivation for you to start, you know, or for you to succeed. So you need to have your why. Why am I doing this thing? So sometimes you, you can be procrastinating. I used to do this a lot, right? So the reason how I deal with procrastination is to think of my goals. And then I would say, hey, Fusa, but you need to have a cum laude so you can't be sleeping. Then immediately, once I think of the cum laude, I jump out of my bed. And the other thing that I would think about is, I have a bazaar. So those days I had, I had a bazaar. So I would think of my bazaar and say, hey, if I sleep here, and then I'm going to fail. If I fail, um, my bazaar is going to be taken away. If my bazaar is taken away, I'm going to be chased away from res. Then if I'm chased away from res, I don't have a place to stay. So I would say, hey, I can't sleep. Or sometimes you can just think about um, other people that are doing great things in their lives and say, hey, if I want to be like uh, that guy, I can't really procrastinate. Let me go to work. So the things that normally distract or which I call distractors, uh, especially these days, social media. It's easy for people to get distracted, you know. Um, and then on social media, there is always something that is trending, right? And uh, there is also some of the what I call the good, um, good procrastinators. You know, sometimes, for example, especially I, I have it like um, um, with myself. I read a lot of books. Like I was procrastinating also when uh, before I even did this presentation. Because now we are reading this interesting book. It can be a non-fiction book. And then now you keep on reading, reading and reading and reading and reading. But you know you have to do something else. Then you must then um, recognize and be aware that, hey, this is now procrastination. I need to start by um, doing this work. And then avoid this guilty feeling. Because you know, procrastination also is very, very problematic. Because now you begin by feeling guilty um, you, by doing other activities. So my stage of getting away from procrastination is just to get on with it, right? Um, just, just do the task that you have to do. Um, and then also realize that um, we as human beings, we derive motivation once we see that something is, is, is going well, we then become motivated. And then once we become motivated, we can then be able to do the task and again and again and again. So for example, if I see that uh, I'm passing thermodynamics, then I want to study thermodynamics again and again and again, right? So in order for you to deal with procrastination, you need to practice and practice and practice more in terms of um, 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 your time management skills, your priorities, and also be disciplined. So how I deal with procrastination is to start with the things that I hate. The subjects that I don't like, I start with it and then get done with it. So start with that task and then you move. And then also disconnect, um, disconnect from social media, disconnect from things that are taking away your time. If you've got games at home that are taking away your time, um, disconnect and, um, and just focus. And then once you succeed, um, um, it gives you that motivation um, um, to start again. What I also do is, Minage guys, I really like nice things, right? So what I do is um, I reward myself. So, and then for example, I'm gonna say, okay, I want to study uh, the chapter on glycolysis. So if I study the chapter on glycolysis, I'm gonna eat ice cream. So now I'm going to, I can't eat the ice cream without having reached that goal. Or it can be a small thing as um, if I achieve my goal, I'm going to run for 30 minutes or I'm going to visit my friend. So reward yourself. So by rewarding yourself, you start feeling good about yourself. 
and then each and every time you do something you know that i'm going to reward myself so this is how you deal with procrastination oh you want kfc you better finish um chapter five. Oh, you want to go and watch a movie you better finish studying um, um uh, chemo matrix so reward yourself as a student so that's how you can deal um with procrastination right so in conclusion i have been speaking for almost an hour now um in my own opinion um remote learning is still going to be with us for quite some time um even if they find a cure for um corona uh, some elements of you studying alone um are still going to be there um from universities and what i would say to you is um collaborate your family in terms of the house chores and uh, get a study buddy somebody that you can be accountable to and please prioritize your activities start with the things that are important the things that you know that these are important things that i need to do which will make me to reach my goals so there used to be a saying that says um are the things that we are doing on a daily basis taking you closer towards your goals so prioritize the things that are taking you closer towards your goals and um, don't work on perfection, work on growth. Um, you are a work in progress. Um, make sure that you think positively, saturate your minds with positive thoughts. It's also easy during remote learning to be engaged in negative thinking, but try to think positively, listen to music or watch things that makes you to feel good about yourself and also a, a human being. And, um, be kind to yourself look after yourself um, these are times that are really difficult and also be kind um, to others the people that are around you um, your classmates or be kind to um, your lecturers even shame your lecturers are also struggling please uh, uh, also give us a break people and uh, I'm wishing you all the best and uh, success in your studies i know you can be able to do this so thank you very much for your time and uh, for your attention i don't know if there are any questions here are there any questions don't be no there are no questions but there was a person asking can they, they will be able to get the recording um yes i will try um to share the link um of the recording to all the people that uh, signed up so we will download and try i'm gonna try to put it on youtube and then send um, the people that are here a link so if you did not receive an email from me um perhaps it would be nice to leave your email on the chat so that we can send you the link some people didn't sign up for the session so we don't have um their email addresses but the yeah the video or the recording will be shared um, um, um with the participants um via youtube right so if there are any questions is there anybody who's got a comment or wants to say something i will open the platform we have some time if somebody wants to say something or if you want to share something just click on that uh, person with the um, hand up then we'll give you the mic to speak or to say something i see Tulis is also here hey welcome Tulis. it's good uh, to see you here nostello is also here it's very nice okay so if there are no questions or comments thank you very much guys for your time and for coming through we really appreciate it um have a nice time so there is an exit button that you can click on the three buttons on the left so you can click there and then this